What up? What up, my fellow followers? What is up? What is up? What is up? Yeah. Hope you guys are having a great evening. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do another episode of Investigates Bat Bat Investigates the Stupid. This is going to be a doozy, folks. Let me turn myself on so you can see me. Boom. Welcome. Party all the time. Now. If any of y'all saw my last episode, uh, it was immediately copyrighted because I played one of my favorite songs by Eddie Murphy. Uh, since I don't have enough followers to make a significant amount of money to put a dent into uh, my uh, my finances, uh, although I am rich, but that's beside the point. Anyways, uh, at this point in time, uh, since I don't have many views, uh, you know, I can't really make too much money off of the video itself. So, I don't mind the copyright. I really don't because I'm not going to make any money off of this right now. Uh, when I start making money, I'll make my own song. But for now, I'm going to stick with uh, Eddie Murphy's party all the time. Now, I'm going to play a short clip and I'm going to see if <laughs> this short clip is enough to get this video copyrighted. Let's do this right now. Here we go. Give it a second. That understanding, why you gonna hurt me? After all of the things I've done for you. So my favorite jam, guys. Favorite jam. So two separate roses and diamonds on your finger. Diamonds on your finger. Okay, look at this guy. Okay. <laughs> this is a way off topic. We haven't even started yet on my uh, episode, but look at this guy right here. Seriously, and what is this dude wearing right there? Is he wearing a cone? <laughs> is is he an alien? I don't know what's going on there. This guy looks like Rick James. Yeah, Rick James, bitch. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Oh well, this is a family episode. Anyways, look at this guy. His his hair is longer than my mom's hair used to be. I can't believe it. And this guy in the back. He's wearing a snow cone. <laughs> he's wearing a snow cone on his head. And he's wearing glasses in the side, which doesn't make any sense. So, anyways, that's my favorite song. Here we go. Here it is, of course. My girl wants to party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. My girl wants to party all the time. Party all the time. She parties all the time. Okay. Anyways, way off topic. Three minutes in, and we haven't talked about anything. Let's go ahead and get into the episode. One thing I want to do really quickly is say, hey, thanks, uh, all my followers. We have 265 subscribers. Party, party, all the time. Yeah, 267 subscribers. Can you guys imagine that? Uh, only a few short weeks ago, we were at uh, the magic number 14. Now we have boomed and blossomed. Now we just need to get more people to actually watch my videos. They're subscribing, but they're not watching. So we get to get them to watch. Watch at least one video for at least five minutes a day, 10 days a week, uh, 365 days a year. Watch a video. And pate. Okay, let's get into the story of Batman Investigates the Stupid Part 2. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now, the reason I'm showing this is because, of course, for those of you who watch my show, my episodes, you guys know that I normally find the stupidest crook out there. And I would really try to figure out how these guys became so stupid. So, I do some investigation through the back because I'm the world's greatest detective. Oh, let me get a sip of my orange juice. Alfred, that is some... Great orange juice, Alfred. Woo! Okay, so we want to find out exactly how these guys become stupid. So, I found this, and apparently somebody worked at a, uh, I think, I don't know what these are. Uh, it looks like, it kind of looks like mattresses, but I don't think it is. I think it's more like paper. So, uh, so, yeah, 
Uh, so anyways, the guy's working at this store, and they're like, hey, guy, go put the things on sale, okay? We need to make sure we do some clearance stuff out. And he's like, cool, what do you want me to do? He's like, you know what? The boss is like, you know what? Go ahead and mark everything 20% off. Okay, so this chum, what he does is he puts 20% off. Uh, this was originally $6.99, but now it is $7. <laughs> oh, and by the way, it's computer paper. Uh, I don't read this. <laughs> I don't read this stuff until I get here. I almost look like toilet paper <laughs> for some strange reason. Uh, okay. So, anyways, this is 500 sheet computer paper that was 6.99, and 20% off makes it seven bucks. <laughs> Do the math, folks. Uh, if I did my math, I'm figuring 20% off of 6.99 is about four dollars, somewhere in that area. You know, because I'm pretty smart. I think it's about four bucks. I think Alfred's trying to call me. Alfred, I thought you were here. Somebody's calling me on my phone. Anyways, long story short, too late. So, little Timmy, his only thing was to do was put 20% off of all the paper that was in uh, Office Depot. Hashtag not sponsored. This guy, he put, okay, 20% off of $6.99 is $7. <laughs> you, you, you owe us a penny. Although you're getting a sale, you owe us a penny. Yikes. Okay, next one. X. Do, do, do. Boom. Okay. <laughs> another another Johnny over there in West Virginia or Tennessee or uh, somewhere in the uh, n what is it north southwest area. Okay, mine's blown right now. Somebody in that area. Basically, what they were doing is. Hold on. Let me sure my mic is on. Mic testing. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Testing. Okay. So. Off. I sure hope this is on. Okay. So. Seven minutes. we got to hurry up. Little Timmy from West Virginia. He's working at Walmart. And he's like, you know what? Let's give our customers a super duper sale. So. He said. You guys can take 130% off whatever you want in the store. <laughs> Basically, you're going to go in there. You're going to get some something in the store. You're going to go uh, check out uh, with all your tools and all your equipment and all your food. And basically, Walmart's going to give you 30% uh, back of what you actually spent. Uh, so that's 130% off the, <laughs> the entire store. Uh, that's kind of, I think that's called liquidation, folks. Uh, that's, not, that's not even, that's uh, somebody going to bankruptcy right there. That is not a very smart idea. That's not a smart business idea. Hold on. Alfred's texting me again. Uh, try calling you both. Uh, voicemail. Call me. Okay. Okay. Give me a sec. Sec. <laughs> not sex. Okay. All right. So. Okay, so anyways, 130% uh, off anything in the store. It's yours. It's basically free. And guess what? We're going to give you uh, $15 at upon checkout. All right, next story. Boy, I got off on tangents. I'm already at <laughs> nine minutes. I haven't even got to my main story yet. Okay. Here is the main story, guys. we got about five minutes to tell the story. Okay, store owner tells robbers to come back later, and they did. And they call them Belgian buffoons. Belgian buffoons came back twice. The second time, the cops were there. Uh, yeah, you think? Okay, maybe they thought, hey, man, we're going to come back and rob this dude. And he's not going to call the cops because he said, come back later. So these Belgian buffoons came back twice. The second time, the cops were there. Let's go to read this really quickly. They're either the world's smartest or uh, they're either the world's most accommodating criminals the greediest, the most optimistic, optimistic, or the dumbest, or maybe all of the above. If you had to put these A, B, C, D, E order, and it was on a test, and they're like, okay, which one is the correct answer, A, B, C, or D, or E, uh, E would be all the above. Uh, this reporter basically said it's E, all the above. So these guys are not only the most accommodating, they're the greediest, they're the most optimistic, and they are the dumbest. So, this is a trifecta, folks. If any of you guys were ever uh, gamblers in the horse industry, this is what we call a trifecta. One, two, three, and came in, basically. Boom. Woo! Alfred. 
I'll call you. Hold on a second, Alfred. I'll call you in a second. So, the BBC reports on 15 tenths minutes Saturday for a Belgian e-cigarette shop owner identified simply as a diddler. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing. Hey, uh, just call me the diddler for TV purposes. Uh, anyways, when a half dozen armed Wow, that's a lot of robbers. When a half dozen wannabe armed robbers showed up mid-afternoon at this store outside karaoke, I told them clearly that 3 p.m. is not the best time to hold the store up. I'm super busy, guys. What are you guys doing? Look, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I got all these people in here. They want to buy smoke stuff, and you guys are robbing the place. This is not the best time uh, for you guys to be doing this, guys. So, you know what? Come back later. So, anyways. Whew. It's dead. He managed to stammer out. I told him clearly, this is not the best time to hold the store up. Diddler tells. A diddler. A diddler tells. <laughs> He's stupid. Inside, he managed to stammer out. If they came back later on, he'd possibly have more euros to hand over. To this, to his surprise, they actually said, hey, you know what? That's a great idea. <laughs> and they left. The cops didn't buy Diddler's story that the suspects would actually return. But they did. Not once, but twice. So... Diddler, we'll call him Diddler, because apparently he was hiding his name for some strange reason. He basically said, hey guys, 3 o'clock is not the best time. Uh, I don't have a lot of money in the tool, or the till, uh, but as you can see, I have tons of people in the shop. I'm about to get their money, and guess what? You come back later on at 6 o'clock, and I'll give you the money at that time. And these criminals were like, okay, cool. Hey guys, not now. We'll be back. <laughs> like, oh, Pete, go get the car. We'll be back. All right, anyways, then the suspects showed back up around, at around 5.30 p.m., and Diddler shook his head at their too early return. I reiterated them, saying, you have to buy a watch, he says, noting he told them to come back at 6.30 when the store would close for the evening. The hopefuls were back at Diddler's door an hour later. Wow, okay, guys, this is even taking a worse turn, uh, worse turn right now. These guys... They went in at 3 o'clock, which is the busiest time of the, of, the, of the day. And we all know that. I don't even go outside at 6 o'clock or 3 o'clock. These guys went at 3 o'clock. They were going to rob the place. The manager told them, hey, come back later at 6.30. And the guys were like, okay, cool. Let's roll. Well, they came back at 5.30. So <laughs> they were off. This manager told them basically, hey, I told you guys, 6.30. I'm still busy. The store hasn't closed yet. And they came back at 6.30. They basically said, okay, man, let's go to Walgreens. Let's get some uh, uh, some candy. Let's get something to snack on, maybe some Twizzlers. Uh, and we'll be back in an hour, dude. We'll see you there. So they came back in an hour. Uh, and it basically says, goes on to say, the hopefuls were back at Diddler's door for an hour later. And plainclothes cops were there to nab him. It was, it's like it was a comedy, the inscrupulous shop owner tells BBC they're they're being called the worst robbers in Belgium five of the most hopeful criminals were arrested including a minor the six managed to get away they weren't the brightest diddler tells RTL which is I don't know I have no idea at least they weren't trying to throw bricks at bulletproof glass <laughs> oh okay <laughs> I don't know where you got that from you know it was bad enough they came back Twice when I told him not to. But, you know, at, at least they didn't uh, throw bricks at my class. You know, because that would have really caused some major issues out there. So, uh, 14, we got 14 minutes. We got four minutes to wrap this up. So, these guys, the worst Belgian buffoons ever. They're the Belgian buffoons ever. They came back not once but twice. They went into the store at 3.30. It was too busy. The manager told them, hey, come back at five, uh, 6.30. They're like, okay, cool. Come on, guys. Let's go uh, shop around. Okay. Then they came back, and it's 5.30. And the guy's like, oh, it's only 5.30, but you know what? I think it's a good time to rob him. So they go back in the store. The manager looks at him and like, hey, guys, what the hell? I told you all, uh, 6.30. I'm still busy. So the guys were like, hey, guys, let's go. He said, come back in an hour. <laughs> so they walk outside. They're just kind of hanging out. They're waiting for an hour just to like listen to music, whatever. And they go back in there. And at that point in time, there are some cops that were not wearing cop uniforms, and they got arrested. Once, I could see. After the second time, I'd be kind of leery. You know, like, eh, maybe this is a trap. You know, I'd be like, 
and they told me to come back in uh, in an hour. I think this is a trap. But uh, they didn't do that. They they went back because they really felt that this guy was going to have more money and they were going to rob him. I think the most funniest thing out of this entire story is the diddler. <laughs> we're going to call him the Belgium diddler. <laughs> I don't know how he got that name or why he picked that name. Hey, this guy's name is probably Ron Green. And they're like, you know what? For purposes on TV, just call me the diddler. <laughs> I go by the diddler. Okay, so, stupid story, stupid crooks. Let's next one. Hurry up. We gotta go. 30 minutes. Boom. Last one. This is what I'm talking about, folks. This is why we have stupid criminals that go back not once but twice to rob stores. At the at the laundry shop, which most people don't go to anymore. I don't know how they still exist. Uh, there's machines that basically say, hey, deposit a certain amount of money and you'll get quarters to use the machine. This basically says, hey, guys, Deposit two bucks and you'll get a dollar seventy five back. <laughs> they're hoping that these people <laughs> don't know math because they're like, you give us uh eight you give us uh two dollars with the quarters, which is basically eight quarters, and we're gonna give you seven of them back and we're gonna keep the other twenty five cents for for us. Now if we do that a hundred times, we're gonna make about twenty five bucks. And that's that's worth it to be working at a stupid uh, laundry shop. I I think that's a great deal. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna give you two bucks, and you give me a dollar seventy five back. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I think that's a great deal. Let me do that. Let me. You know what? Give me six dollars worth. I'm gonna give you six dollars, and you give me five twenty five back, and we'll call it as even, Steven. Yikes. Okay. That's where we get the stupid criminals and the Belgium's most brightest criminals. Boom, we are over. That was a great oh That was a great video. Again, I keep my videos between twelve to eighteen minutes because a Ted says so. I don't know if y'all ever seen Ted Talks. I did a bad talk recently. I'm gonna do another one of those soon. But Ted says to keep it between uh uh twelve and eighteen minutes and I'm at seventeen minutes and thirty seconds. So let's wrap this up real quick. I really appreciate you coming out. I appreciate all the subscribers that that I've been given. I appreciate everything that this great country has done for me. Hold on a second. Party. Hold on, I'm running out of time. I really appreciate all the subscribers, all the people who've watched my channel. Tell your friends, let's grow this thing. Thursday, I'm gonna have a huge announcement to make, uh, so y'all stay tuned. But until then, To me, my girl wants to party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. Let's do the fishing pole. Girl wants to party all the time, party all the time. Boom. Alrighty, folks. Hey, it's been a great time. I've gone over my 18 minutes, so let me go to wrap this up. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you Thursday. Stay, stay, <laughs> stay positive. To stay smart. We'll see you soon. Uh, the bat's out. Alfred, off. Thank you. Later, guys. <laughs>